Isaiah chapter 9 The people walking in darkness have seen a great light On those living in the land of the shadow of death a light has dawned You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest as men rejoice when dividing the plunder For as in the day of Midian's defeat you have shattered the yoke that burdens them the bar across their shoulders the rod of their oppressors Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning will be fuel for the fire For to us a child is born to us a son is given and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father prince of peace of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end he will reign on david's throne and over his kingdom establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever the zeal of the lord almighty will accomplish this let us be silent for a moment the center of hearts and spirits and focus on the one who is wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father prince of peace
Oh Lord, we just thank you for this blessed day where we can remember you, where we can celebrate you, where we can draw closer to you, where we can just let our gaze upon you, Jesus. Thank you that you have called and chosen each one of us, Lord, to come into this place of praise, of worship, of adoration. We just really pray, God, that this morning you would be lifted in each one of our hearts, minds, bodies, spirits, in our homes. I just want to say that we love you. We encourage you to see all the praise and worship that is due to you, Jesus. In your most precious name. Amen. Amen. We come, Lord Jesus, and we offer you the best that we have in our weakness and frailty. We thank you that you are like this loving Father. You are the loving Father who so appreciates and cherishes and treasures even the little things that your children bring to you.
Share something. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> this morning, as I was just praying before service, um, I remembered something, uh, which was that at um, every Christmas on Christmas Day, Alec Padamsi is no more, but he used to be the head of Lintas and quite a personality in Bombay. He had this Christmas party at, and his, his building was called Christmas Eve. And it was like the party of the year for the whole advertising and community. You know, it was like everybody would wait to know who would be invited to that party. You know, and when you got an invitation to Alex's Christmas party, like you had arrived. And I just thought this morning that our Christmas party, you know, it is the most anticipated event in the whole of history. And here is God who invites everybody. There is no one. I just when we were singing the song, it was like, come and see. It's not like, come only if you are okay and if you are right with God and if you are good, but just come. And I was thinking of um, Sushi's song that she ended with last time about come all ye unfaithful. So just really, I want to just remind us all that no matter what we're feeling or how we're feeling, we're being invited into this incredible, incredible event to come and see uh, Majesty in a manger. So, Father, how do we thank you, Lord? No matter who we are, Lord, how we're feeling, Lord, no matter what we've done, what we thought, what we felt, no matter our brokenness, disillusionment, no matter our doubts, fears, you invite us so wholeheartedly, Lord. And when, you, when we even take that one step, Lord, you come running with a ring and a robe and you bring us right into this most awesome place, Lord, to witness and behold the beauty, the majesty, the glory of your precious Son. How do we thank you, Jesus, that you came down from that glorious place alongside the Father, from a place of majesty and awesome power, you came down as the most helpless, a little babe in a manger. And you came down, Lord, knowing that you were going to die for each one of us. You gave up everything, Lord, to come and enter each of our lives. How do we thank you, Lord? And how do we thank you, Holy Spirit, that every single moment, Lord, you are here with us drawing us closer to the Father, revealing Jesus to us. So we just thank you this morning for this most awesome reminder that you are here, Emmanuel, God with us. And we just want to open our hearts, our minds, our bodies and our spirits to welcome you in wholeheartedly to every part of ourselves, Lord. The darkest, deepest places, Lord. It's just like we're ashamed of, Lord. The joyous places just come and take over. And make your home in our hearts, in our homes, in our families, Lord. In our church. In your most beautiful and precious name, we thank you and pray. Amen. Amen. Play this mercy, the greatest gift of 
Lord, to come as a baby, to come vulnerable, to come to a world that is going to reject you. I just want to say, especially, Father God, how how hard it must be for you to have seen your son sent to a to a world where we protect our kids from so much, Lord, and. You made the great sacrifice and sent your son for us. We just want to be so mindful this morning of your love, your sacrifice, the price that you paid. Not just the rejection and the lack of reception that time, but that we as your people daily continue to give you, Lord. I just want to come this morning with a different heart, a different spirit, with more gratitude, with devotion, with thankfulness, with mindfulness of your coming to this earth as a little child for each one of us. I'm just forever grateful for what you've done. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen.
Morning, Lord. We just uh, we just stand in awe of you, our God, who left heaven's throne to just enter our messy, messy lives. Our God came down and is and was Emmanuel. Thank you, Lord, that you are not a God who dwells in the past. You're not a God of the one-off. You're the God of the everyday. You're the God who still speaks. You're the God who still chases us. You're the God who stands with arms wide open, welcoming us in every single day, no matter how messy we are. You are the God who comes to us in the simplest of ways, in the way that we just need to encounter you. Thank you that you are the God of the everyday miracles. Thank you that you are the God who speaks and sings over us. Thank you that we get to witness this miracle every single day. That our God finds us worthy of this kind of love. 
and we just worship you and we say this morning we adore you and we give you all praise and glory for what you've done in your mighty and matchless name lord jesus we pray amen truly lord you are the god who is still speaking to us and believe that you want to speak to us again this morning from all that is so familiar in this christmas story we pray holy spirit that you will bring new truths to us bring us fresh revelation as we've been singing we come lord open our hearts minds and spirits even our bodies to all that you have for us in jesus name amen Yes, as I was thinking about the Christmas story, um, and some of this thought of revival came into my mind, and suddenly it struck me that so many of the revival prayers that we have been praying over the years were answered in that first Christmas. So I sent a message out to a few of those who. You know, especially since uh, all since time we've been praying for revival, and I said, just send me off the top of your head a few phrases and words that you would use. And I took some of them together, and I want to share them today. And you can see them all behind us. I don't know if you can read those words, but Anil has made these posters with <coughs> about twelve phrases that I've chosen for today. Okay. And when I think about revival, and I think about the fact that we've been praying for so many years and we've spoken about the fact that there was an expectation and an anticipation in that first christmas before before that first christmas for years and years and in the case of anna for example possibly for 60 years okay so many people must have been praying the kind of prayers that we call revival prayers must have been desiring god seeking him and praying these kind of prayers like Simeon and Anna and I'm sure many others and it struck me that their prayers were answered that first christmas so today i call my message the first christmas was revival okay. so i'm going to take actually 12 phrases but i'll take them over uh, in 10 topics the first is more of you and that's something that we've been which is a constant prayer of us when we pray for revival we say lord we want more of you and colossians 1 verse 19 says for god was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him that is in jesus for god was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him i don't think we can get more than all of his fullness and so truly as that first christmas God did give more of himself he gave all of himself and that first christmas answered that revival prayer more of you more of you lord more of you the only problem was it didn't look like more of him it looked very different from more of him a little baby in a manger it didn't look like not just more of god but all the of the fullness of god and i wonder sometime when revival comes or if revival has already come will we recognize it because of what we were expecting that first christmas god didn't just give more of himself he gave all of himself the fullness okay the second prayer that we just pray all the time is let your glory fall and those of you who have been in the prayer meetings you can just nod your heads you can say oh yeah of course we've been praying that lord let your glory fall okay i have attached that to light on a hill and i'll tell you why in the old testament glory often refers to uh, i actually know in both the testaments glory can refer to the weight of his presence but it can also refer to especially in the new testament light the new testament word for glory is about the brilliant the brilliance of light which is why i put light on a hill as well okay 
and we of course we see God's glory falling at that first Christmas. Luke 2 verse 9, an angel of the Lord appeared to them, that is to the angels, the, the shepherds, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And the glory refers to a brilliant light. Isaiah 9 verse 2 predicts this, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. And we know it was not just any light. It was the very glory of God, that very brilliance of His presence. Okay. And so the glory of God fell in that first Christmas. The thing that we pray for again and again and again fell at that first Christmas. And the lowly shepherds were able to behold it. And I suspect, though it's not written that way, when the angel appeared to Zechariah and appeared to Mary, Surely there must have been some brilliant light or something like that. But of course, revival is not just God's glory falling. Revival is also being a light on a hill. Light not just being revealed to us, but light flowing from us or through us. And Isaiah 60 verse 1 says, Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. Okay? For your light has come and the glory of the Lord rise upon you. That of course refers to Jesus. But it says arise, shine. We are called to shine because God's glory has fallen. And so again at that first Christmas, both these prayers were answered. Let your glory fall. Let us be a light on a hill. And both those prayers were answered in that first Christmas in an amazing way. Okay. A third phrase that we say so often is, new life okay. we talk about death we talk about dry bones we talk about being in a desert and then we say lord give us your new life okay. john chapter 10 verse 10 okay. you know do you realize that every phrase in the bible in the new testament that says jesus came for this is a christmas verse because jesus came at Christmas and so I realized that we, we don't we don't use some of these verses but for God so loved the world that he sent his son is a Christmas verse because he was sent at Christmas and so is John chapter 10 verse 10 I have come that they may have life and have it to the full or I have come that they may have life and they may have it in abundance so Jesus came to give us abundant life he came to give us this new life and the prayer for new life was answered so amazingly at Christmas because Jesus, God the Son, the Son of God himself came. And he came not just to give us any type of life, but to give us abundant life. And he didn't just come to give us abundant life, eventually he's come to give us eternal life. Another prayer answered at that first Christmas. A fourth phrase is transformation. And transformation of people, of our hearts, transformation of situations. And we've been looking at those videos and we're seeing transformation of communities and even nations. And we see so much of transformation taking place just in that first Christmas story. I thought of Luke 1 verse 48, where Mary says, From now on, all generations will call me blessed. From now on, what was her state before that? Completely insignificant, completely unknown, completely ordinary. But from now on, there was a transformation in her very identity, in her circumstances. And we see in that first Christmas, people being transformed. Zechariah goes from unbelief to prophesying about both John the Baptist and the Messiah. Elizabeth is transformed from her barrenness. The shepherds are just pulled out of obscurity. We have Joseph and Mary in the ordinariness of their situations and what happens to them. The Magi, I don't think you realize what a transformation was made in the Magi. They must have never left their cloistered academic confines ever because that's how scholars are, no? That's how academics are. 
they love their desks and their books and their pens and here they go traveling off in search of just just looking at a star okay they were they were transformed from the academic routine to being to being adventurers literally okay. i think of all the indiana jones stories but before them were the magi who went on this quest for a treasure and they even found a tyrannical ruler and you know all kinds of amazing things okay. we see in this and in that first christmas situation being transformed from hope to despair light to darkness and what isaiah uh, i think it either 61 talks about no you've turned my mourning into dancing garments of praise instead of a spirit of despair the oil of gladness instead of uh, sadness all of those things are happening here in that first christmas in that first christmas we see revival transformation the fifth word one of my favorite words when i pray for revival is outpouring and we ask god we say god we want an outpouring and we remember elijah's story we remember the outpouring that happened in elijah's story of rain and then of fire god had the fire and then rain you know philippians 2 verse 7 which is another christmas verse it says in our bibles he made himself nothing other bibles translate it he emptied himself but the literal meaning is this he poured himself out and so at that first christmas there was an outpouring okay jesus not jesus he was god the son the second person of the trinity made himself nothing emptied himself poured himself out there was an outpouring of god in that first christmas and i want to encourage us because if there was all that happened in that first christmas all of it is possible today all of it has happened throughout the ages i don't want this to just be an academic thing or oh, that happened at that first christmas all the more we want to see it in our lives and i believe that we are seeing it in different ways and different degrees that we want to see the fullness the sixth word or phrase is signs and wonders how much we pray for signs and wonders and and when we are praying you know it struck me that when we are praying for signs and wonders and in signs and wonders come the dreams and visions when we used to pray on uh, on fridays and again in at at church and then at carol's house hmm? we'd be praying for different things and one of the first persons who would pray for signs and wonders would be renel because she wants all that that power and that action you know of course all of us want it all of us want it and you see in that first christmas you see these words say luke 1 to 65 and 66 all the neighbors were filled with awe and throughout the hill country of judea people were talking about all these things everyone who heard this wondered about it asking what then is this child going to be for the lord's hand was with him luke 2 verse 18 all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them so these words we see in the in the christmas story filled with awe everybody talking about these things they're wondering they're astonished they're amazed why all these words being used because so many supernatural things were happening in that first christmas there was there was a virgin birth you can't have you can't get more miraculous than that angelic visitations signs in the heavens just the supernatural had come in such a powerful way into into the ordinariness of people's lives and they had not seen this for so long and of course dreams and visions all of this was happening in that for in the you know chapter uh, matthew chapter 1 and 2 matthew chapter 1 and 2 and then luke chapter 1 and 2 are just filled with the supernatural filled with signs and wonders and that word sign i mean people are wondering of course why is it called a sign and a wonder because it causes people to wonder but it's also a sign of something beyond something supernatural something amazing happening and so we we see just a, a proliferation of the supernatural of signs and wonders in that first christmas 
you know, if you even got one of those things in our time, we'd say, yeah, revival has come. Okay, it reminds me of Bill Johnson who, you know, who would say that just uh, about, about Mark where it says that uh, Jesus went to his hometown and there were hardly any miracles. He said, if we had hardly any miracles, we'd be so happy. But in the Bible, we are disappointed. Okay. The seventh phrase, come Holy Spirit. Do I need to say any more? No. Suddenly there's such a, there's so much activity of the Holy Spirit in the Christmas story. And even before his birth, in what happened with John the Baptist. And when we consider there's been 400 years of nothing supernatural happening. And that before that the Holy Spirit was so rare. And suddenly this increased activity. He overshadowed Mary. He filled several people. He conceived Jesus. He prophesied through Zechariah, through Elizabeth, through Mary, through uh, Simeon, and I, possibly through Anna as well. He guided people. There's heightened activity. But the good news is this, that heightened activity in the Christmas story of the Holy Spirit is only foreshadowing the age of the Spirit that we live in. And so much more has been true and will continue to be true for us. And we should be encouraged by that. God, amazing things happen in that time. You know, for example, uh, Vinod's sermon that the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary, but He's overshadowing us today to conceive and give birth to amazing things. And He's doing it all the time. So come Holy Spirit, and boy, did that Holy Spirit, did the Holy Spirit come that first Christmas? and in the months preceding that first Christmas. And then of course we see the whole uh, um, Jesus ministry and the apostolic ministry just filled with the activity of the Holy Spirit from that time on even to this day. The eighth phrase, let heaven invade earth. And I started saying this actually when I uh, saw a book by Bill Johnson. When heaven invades earth, I think that's the title of it. And he keeps and he, he prays of, about heaven invading earth, and it just struck me as such an amazing picture of heaven invading earth. And that's what I want to see. That's what we want to see. That's such a powerful revival prayer. <coughs> Isaiah nine verses six and seven. What I read earlier: For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulder. And he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. And when I read this verse and I connected it to this phrase, let heaven invade earth, I realized that I had actually had a rather narrow understanding. I, I still thought of heaven invading earth as heaven coming. But you know, when you invade, you take over. And that's what Isaiah 9 is saying. He will take over. The government will be on his shoulder. He will establish his government. He will sit on his throne. He will establish his kingdom. He will bring that justice and righteousness and peace that are the hallmarks of his kingdom to earth. So the invasion is not just coming, the invasion is taking over, the invasion is establishing authority, establishing reign, the Lord reigns, the government will be on his shoulders and it's something that we have to really realize that it's that in that first Christmas heaven invaded earth, the kingdom broke through, the king of kings came to the earth and he has set up something that is true for you and me today. I want to preach on this sometime, but the church is so powerless and we are supposed to be his representatives. The representatives of the one who came and invaded and established his kingdom. And we scurry around fearful. And we do not use the authority and the weapons and the power that God has given us. Because we are his body. We are his people. If the government is on his shoulders, what is on our shoulders? 
But to go back to revival, heaven invaded earth that first Christmas. And of the increase of his kingdom, government and peace, there will be no end. Jesus said, my, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. Jesus said, my kingdom is advancing and forceful men and women and sadly more women than men nowadays will take hold of it. Okay. Heaven invaded earth in that first Christmas and is continuing to invade earth through his people. The ninth phrase is manifest presence. You say, God, we want your manifest presence. What do I mean by manifest presence? To manifest is to make clear or to make known or to reveal. It's different from omnipresent. No, God is omnipresent. He's everywhere. But we want him to make himself known, to be manifest. And Hebrews 1 verses 1 to 3. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. And later on, the sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being. God made himself manifest, revealed himself in Jesus, the radiance of his glory, the exact representation of his being. The prophets were amazing. All that they said was amazing. Nothing compared to how God manifested himself in Jesus. And so in John 14 verse 9, Jesus is able to say, Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Not a glimpse of the Father. You know, just, just imagine, Moses had an astonishing experience on Mount Sinai. Okay? Where he saw God as nobody had seen God. But God still said, you can only see my back. Despite all of that, you can only see my Back. I will pass in front of you, I'll cover you and then when I've passed you, you can, I'll open your eyes and you can see my back. But Jesus is standing there, sitting there with his disciples face to face and saying, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Not from behind, not just a glimpse, fully, completely. Okay. At that first Christmas, God manifested his presence as never before. And he continues to do so today. Okay. And the last phrase I want to talk about is tangible presence. There's omnipresence, there's manifest presence. But we say, Lord, we want your tangible presence. I pray that so often for Sunday services. Lord, I, I want to see your tangible presence. What do I mean by that? I want people to be able to touch, to feel. God and know without a doubt that he has come. John 1 verse 14, you know, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Why did the word become flesh? Why did the word become flesh? What was intangible became tangible. And in fact, 1 John 1 verse 1, John says is that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at, and our hands have touched. You can't get more tangible than that. To hear, to see, to look at and to even touch. That first Christmas, God manifested himself and God also made himself so tangible that he could even be touched and seen and heard. Of course, what was Mary hearing that first Christmas? Loud crying, I'm sure. <laughs> That, 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 uh, at, I think is it in a way in a manger? The little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. Really? You really think the little Lord Jesus did not cry? He did all the awful messy things that babies do. Because he became flesh. Because there was the tangible presence of God in our midst. And he said, I will not leave you orphans, but I will send the Holy Spirit. 
and today Jesus makes himself manifest he makes himself tangible through the holy spirit and so we see these 10 or 12 phrases that i've shared today that i've put up on the board things that we keep praying and praying and praying and in different ways we are experiencing them in our lives and have been for a while but we see all of them really in their fullness in that first christmas and that first christmas was revival so what was the heart of revival we see it in that first christmas and we will see it and it's there today and that's what the heart of revival always is is emmanuel god with us you know, the heart of revival is god with us everything else comes from that the signs and wonders the dreams and visions the establishing of kingdom the feeling the touching the experiencing all comes from that one simple place the transformation comes from one simple place one simple reality god with us and that was the gift that god gave us at that first christmas okay you know for anyone who has any kind of relationship with god if you may not have the language but our hearts are always crying out with revival prayers before i knew the word revival there were revival prayers springing from my heart i just didn't know they were called revival prayers or what they were and i remember going to ubs to the seminary and looking for one book and i suddenly saw this a whole section from top to bottom with books on revival and i was so charged up and as we pray and as we uh, draw closer to god we get more and more language for the things that are on our hearts and we realize oh, that's what we were feeling that's what we were crying out for asking god for and for centuries there must have been a cry from god's people for revival in whatever language that they used whatever words that they used and all of those prayers think of anna and 60 plus years of revival prayers were answered in that amazing moment when jesus was born and then continue to be worked out through his life and then through the life of the church even to this day and i want to encourage i am encouraged myself and i want to encourage us the prayers we've been praying the cries of our hearts for more for outpouring for signs and wonders for heaven invading earth for manifest and tangible presence all of these things that i mentioned and probably so much more i just chose 12 because i can't preach just a long sermon yeah all of those things were answered in that first christmas were answered when the holy spirit was poured out at pentecost continue to be answered as which is activity in our lives and as we see him more and more as we see god more and more as we say god we want you we want you we want you they will be answered more and more in their intensity in their frequency because he has already given all of himself he has already poured himself out fully it's just for us to receive accept activate desire manifest in and through our lives Let's pray. Now, thank you, Jesus. I want to thank you for that first Christmas, for the revival that came in that first Christmas, and that, in a in a very real sense, has not stopped from that day on. It has continued, and it has waxed and waned, and in a sense. depending on the the desire or the indifference of your people and so this christmas i pray lord increase our desire deal with our indifference and every obstacle to more of you to 
all the things that we've just spoken about. Lord, we want to see the fullness of revival in our time without a shadow of doubt, overwhelming our lives, overwhelming our communities and cities and nations. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for the revival at first Christmas. I thank you for the promise that is in that revival. I thank you for what you've been doing in our lives over the years, Lord. We don't want to uh, look down upon what you've done. We don't, we don't want to despise the small beginnings, but we're asking for more. We're asking for all of it. And we thank you that in that first Christmas is a promise of so much more. In Jesus' name, Amen. What I'd like us to do now is I'd like us to continue with the time of sharing that we had last week where we uh, spoke of things that we've been doing and uh, that God has been leading us to do to bless people at this Christmas. Okay. But I'm going to start by sharing what the Sunday School did. Okay. So I'm going to start, I'm going to show a small video that it looks like Luke and Sushmita and Supriya, I suppose, and whoever else is involved has made. So this is what they did at Christmas. That was amazing! <laughs> superb, Sush, superb, Luke. All credit goes to 
Luke and those bachas. I'm just amazed. I didn't realize how difficult it is to sing Little Drummer Boy when you are in different houses, when you don't have someone telling you when to enter. But these kids have been so fabulous, and it actually gives you an essence of what happens in Highway Sunday School because, uh, yeah, Supes and I know every child is beating to the beat of their own drum. And here the two of us are trying to make some sense of all of it, but it's it's just been such an awesome play, you know, uh, time with these kids. Yeah, praise God. Amazing, praise God. Okay, who else wants to go to speak about what you've been able to do this Christmas? Okay, some of you two weeks ago said I'm going to do this. So have you done it? So I'll just share. We um, last week we shared about our, the girls and their blankets and whatever. This week we had planned to uh, we wanted to have a little carol time like we had done last year in our building here outside, and uh, for just all the residents. But unfortunately, we couldn't get the whole fellowship to come like they had last time, which was just amazing. All all these amazing singers, but they, we couldn't get them in here because of all these restrictions. So this time it was literally uh, our family choir and uh, <laughs> is here and uh, Roy and Regina they came as well and uh, wonderful for a lot of people from All Saints John and Miriam also came but everybody I mean all the neighbors who were here they all came they sat around the you know the corridors on the steps and we just had such a it was such an amazing time of like carol carol singing everybody together and somebody one of the neighbors wore cake and gave cake to everybody so it was just like, like this lovely time of fellowship yeah and mom most importantly mom and we could also come down and be there and be part of it so that was really special Oh wow! At Molly and Mon is everybody there? Oh, did you want to share something? Because I just it, there was a noise coming, so I muted you. But if you wanted to share, just unmute. Deepa, go ahead. Yeah, Deepa. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Yeah, so I uh, actually over the last two weeks, we, um, nothing much, nothing much is compared to what everyone else is doing. So I baked two cakes and uh, we gave the watchman and my maids and uh, my clinic staff. And then Natasha and I bought donuts and uh, we just gave some kids on the roads near the station and Shivaji Park. And nice, nice. Mine is not yet done, but uh, I was been coordinating with uh, somebody at MUD and apparently there's this orphanage in MUD and uh, this week we should be going there and spending some time with the kids, probably singing some carols, getting them some baked goodies. So uh, that's in the pipeline. Um, yeah, so when we go Good. there. So next Sunday we'll have more sharing. And I just want to praise God for Deepa. I know she said she just did cake, but she was literally a lifesaver last week when my maid suddenly took ill. And Deepa really came on board and gave, you know, what medicines, what to do, this, that, and the other. So just want to thank God for her and, you know, how instantly she came to help. Thank you. Yeah. Deepa is a highway doctor. We know there's a highway accountant. <laughs> okay. Yes. I'm just sharing firstly uh, what Swapna's share them um, privately she just sent this message Amma Shweta and I managed to feed a few people in your church as often as we can they are the cobblers and the shopkeepers who didn't have food and business because of the pandemic okay as uh, they said Akshay is not well and part of the reason why he's not well is he, because he is like a majorly overworked Santa Claus so Akshay cannot do anything in small measure his uh, his act of giving was that he would, uh, apart from secret Santa happening in college, he would be secret Santa to the entire class. And we agreed 
without realizing what this would entail. So he got everyone's addresses, managed to create a secret identity, a secret message, gave a, for a fake number and address, put in gifts for everyone, which is coasters. Uh, he printed out jokes for everyone to have a good laugh, a message separately for each person and a keychain. And uh, of course, because people didn't know it was him when they had the uh, class party, he was he went off camera and he could hear unfiltered many reactions. This is the first time I ever got a parcel with my name in the mail and who could have done it or blah, blah blah. But basically, yeah, when he was, as his father would say, dying this morning, he said, could you please share on my behalf? So I'm just sharing. This is what Akshay did. And, yeah. and then he had only 1 million 48 hours <laughs> doing all this stuff. And now he's got fever. I just wanted to also say, you know, just say a big, huge thank you to uh, Sups and Anila for all these highlights and the ornaments and the because you know I, I and of course Meryl and Alive because what we did with our building also was we kind of uh, gave like in a little Alive bag a little ornament and a cake but it's just like so many people have just been you know you somebody comes home I can just give them something and that's like an ornament you know either an ornament or a poster or whatever from Alive and it's it's so beautiful because it has a little message it's not just a pretty thing but it has a little Christmas message so there's all these Christmas messages going out into so many homes and, and so just really thank you Soups and thank you Anila for making all this possible and thank God. Yes. I know Carol shared two weeks in a row that she was going to do it. I know that she did it because serendipitously I landed up on the day that she, they were doing the baking oh. and I got one I got one banana bread cake as well as a result, which got polished off in one day. Uh, yes. Was it serendipity or was it planned? It was totally serendipitous. I did not know at all. The deed, the deed was done. Everybody had banana cake and um, in my building everybody got uh, daily bread and a cash gift and banana cake. So that was good. They were happy. So I just I just want to share something. Um, one of the things that I've been thinking about uh, this Christmas is, you know, we're always thinking about getting gifts. And one of the things that I've just been trying to focus on 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 one single word, which is to divest. Um, and I just looked around my room, my house, and I just saw the clutter of how many things I had and how many unnecessary things I had. Um, so I started with clothes. I just have too many clothes and you know, um, most of them are pretty, and Pervin will attest to this, pretty high quality stuff. And um, also through the work that I do in sports, I just have tons of, of, you know, sports merchandise through the league. So I just thought I need to start divesting myself of, of unnecessary baggage and clothes. So I spent the last couple of weeks uh, sorting out my cupboards and just taking out all the clothes that I just didn't need. And there were tons of it, tons of stuff. I washed everything again, although everything was clean, it's ironed. And I just put it in bags and put it into my car. Um, and it's just amazing uh, just how many people are out there on the road, you know, people who are living on the road, uh, sleeping on the road or begging. And instead of giving money this time, I just, you know, I just gave, just gave my clothes. Um, you know, I know it's not new, um, uh, but these were these, and, and, and they were they were still good, high quality, um, and I think there was a sense of appreciation uh, of, of when when I just instead of giving giving money, I gave the clothes, and sometimes there was a sense of apprehension or um, you know puzzlement, but they took it. So I'm hoping that in some small way they're useful especially in the evenings when it gets a little bit colder. Praise God. So I want to share about yesterday because uh, yeah, doing, doing the outreach Christmas party without Anne 
was rather difficult. Okay, so she she had planned everything and uh, to give uh, packets to uh, I think what are they called like food packets. She the person they had made in the shop chips and biscuit and chocolate and drink and things like that and they were going to distribute and because uh, unlike other years where there was a Christmas party and you knew the kids who were coming and you know if, if you've been to especially All Saints Christmas party you know what a production it was long lists and it was like a military with military precision everything was done and it was still chaotic despite and doing all of that can you imagine what it was yesterday we had to do it in the in the slum where they're in the middle of their, uh, they have some place called committee in the middle of the slum, which means there was no, you don't know how many kids are going to land up. Uh, obviously, as the news spreads, kids landed up and it was, it was quite a chaotic time. Though it, there was, must have been about five or six mothers and another two or three older boys to help out. But the good thing that happened was that, I mean, we gave, we gave 200 we could give 200 and I think later another 20 or give, were given packets and that fell short actually because there were more kids so we couldn't do anything about that. But we got them into this room in in four different batches and I was able to share the Christmas story in like two minutes, one minute in my tuta futa Hindi. But even more importantly I said we are going to say a prayer and I made them all repeat a prayer after me uh, receiving the new life that Jesus gave, all this in Hindi. Uh, the videos are there, but I've I've chosen not to show it. It'll be more funny than that little drama boy video that you just saw. But it was quite an experience, and it was it was nice to do that and to you know to to involve more people. As obviously many more kids were part of it and heard the story at least to in to some extent. And no, Misha, I'm not going to share. I'll share it separately on WhatsApp or something. <laughs> And so I want to praise God for that, that it happened. <laughs> Please share, share it so that we also know how to do it in two minutes. We can tell the story. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send it on, I'll send on WhatsApp to everybody. Okay, praise God for that. You know what, I, I, while Jairaj was saying, the thing that I think is so important and it's so sad that Rinelle is not around. I hope she's on Facebook at she least. Said they joined briefly on Facebook. You know, because of the baby and all that. But that small little challenge that she gave has made such a difference because I think people have, so many of us have actually stepped out and done it. You know, to physically do it makes such a difference because we can be interacting with that person and uh, feeling their joy or whatever it is that they're experiencing. So praise God for that. Uh, what we'll do is we'll go go into communion and then um, straight into closing worship. We've been doing all these uh, Advent meditations in the mornings, and when I did the birth of the shepherds, no, I think the birth of Jesus, to recognize that that baby in the manger was the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That Jesus came in order to offer himself as a sacrifice for you and for me. As Jackie Pullinger says in the Alpha Course, if you were the only person in the world, Jesus would have died for you. He loves you so much. And today as we uh, partake of communion, want to remember that incredible love, uh, the love of the Father, who sent his son for us and the love of the son who was willing to come and pay this price for those who were literally enemies of him, who hated him or who didn't even know him and the love of the spirit who continues to be with us to reveal Jesus to us, to do his work in us. For on the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took bread he broke it and he gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper he took the cup and he said, This cup is the blood of the new covenant that I make with you and with many for the forgiveness of sins. 
do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so as we eat and drink, I think if you can just in your mind picture that uh, the stable and the manger to recognize that the, ch that the chosen destiny of that baby was to die for you and me. All of the miracles, all of the supernatural, all that we've talked about today that were signs of revival, all of it was in order for the cross to happen, in order for the veil to be torn, in order for you and me to have a relationship with our Heavenly Father. The thought is overwhelming. What kind of love is this? What kind of a God is this? The one who gave all of himself for us deserves all of ourselves. So as we eat and drink and we remember his love, let's also respond with offering ourselves afresh to him, fully, completely, not holding anything back. Let's come Holy Spirit and receive Let's enable us to give the fullness of adoration, devotion, surrender to the one who deserves it all. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. 
with skin Forgotten parts to human hearts The blessings of his hand No yummy here is coming But in this world of sin Lord Jesus, even as this morning we have responded to your invitation to come, even as we've heard how you answered so many revival prayers in that first Christmas, we say our hearts are still not satisfied. We want more of you. Revival prayers continue to burst from our hearts and our minds and spirits and once again this morning we say come Holy Spirit come and fill us afresh come and overwhelm us with the Father's love come and do a new work of transformation of us into Jesus likeness Come and overflow through us with light and life and hope and love to this world that needs it. We open ourselves and want to receive all of you, Holy Spirit. Say more of you. I'm going to encourage a few of us if you want to pray, to unmute and pray, to respond to the to the word, to that revival at that first Christmas, to respond to such a tangible sense of his presence right now in our midst. 
Lord, in the words of this song, um, Lord, you've already given yourself to us. Lord, and you, you've invited us to abide in you deeply, Lord God. And Lord, we want to respond to this invitation. Lord, we want to abide in your love in your presence because Lord apart from you we can't do anything like your word like you yourself have told us in your word Lord and Lord we thank you that your kingdom is here your kingdom has been advancing your kingdom broke through Lord on that first Christmas day and continues to advance Lord and you want to advance your kingdom through us Lord and Lord, we just ask that we would be able to abide in you in every area of our lives that we've been resisting you, Lord. Um, oh, we want to trust you more. We want you to transform our thoughts, the patterns of our thinking, Lord God, to be more in line with the way you see things, Lord, with the thoughts you have for us, for our lives. Lord, we want to say yes to you and to your plans for our lives and for the lives of those around us, Lord. Thank you that you have chosen to work through us, Lord God. It's such a high esteem. And just like I shared earlier, Lord, we don't want to um, be cowering back out of fear or anxiety, Lord Jesus. Lord, we want to arise and shine because our light has come. And Lord, your glory shines upon us, Lord. And if ever the world is needed to see that, it's now. If if we have ever needed you, it's now. So come, Holy Spirit, and just um, continue to stir up our hearts and continue to Draw us closer to you, Lord God. Thank you, like Sush prayed earlier, that you meet us wherever we are in the simplest of things. Um, we love you, Jesus. And uh, we just want to continue to say yes to you, Lord, in, in every area of our lives. Amen. Amen. Lord, and we just continue to pray and ask, Lord, that we will have the heart feelings, the eyes, the minds, Lord. The cry of Elizabeth, of Mary, of the shepherds, Simeon and Anna, Lord. But we don't want to miss anything, Lord. We don't want to miss the move of your spirit in small and big ways. We you know, Lord, that in so many things you start so small and so quietly, Lord. Like the baby in the manger, Lord. And we want to see it all, we want to be witness to it all, we want to be fully present and in line. We want to catch, Lord, the wind of revival, we want to catch the Holy Spirit, catch you, Lord, as you know. We want to thank you, Lord, this morning for reminding us, Lord, that even as you are hovering over creation and even as you over the Mary, Lord, and birth, conceived and birth something new and so spectacular and amazing in her and through her, it is the same with each one of us. the Spirit that you will stand in, Lord, all that you have seeded and birth in us. In the precious name we pray. Amen. Father, we just want to thank you again for um, for this day, Lord, for this uh, story that we are reminded of, of heaven invading earth. Lord, as we look at that manger and that stable, we are struck again by how fresh and how new and how relevant and how true this story is. Yes, Lord. And as some of us have prayed, Father, we just ask really for that that newness and that freshness to to awaken us and to invade us and to 
inspire us from this day forth to to just be and think differently. Just thank you, Holy Spirit, for for your presence here, for the truth of who you are and the life changes that you make in us. We just ask that you, Holy Spirit, will be made manifest in us as we leave this place and as we um, move on again into, into the world, into all the events of our lives. May we truly be um, your light and, and your radiance. We thank you, Jesus, for who you are. Amen. Yeah, we 
Jesus for the best gift of all time. Thank you for the unceasing hope and promise we have in you. Father, just continue to be in awe of who you are, of the way you've sealed your love and binded each one of us to you, how you constantly lavish us with your presence, with your love, with your grace and mercy, Lord. There is truly nothing that we can ever feel hopeless or helpless because we have you, our mighty saviour, our king, our best friend, our everything. Thank you, Jesus, that even today, as we come to celebrate you, as we come to rejoice and adore you, you are just adoring us, you are ministering to us, and you are depositing in each one of our hearts and revealing more of yourself to us, Lord. Thank you that you never stop giving and that we can constantly come to you and know that you will keep filling us. Thank you, Jesus, for this amazing relationship and amazing intimacy we have with you. We truly lack nothing and we just want to say thank you. Thank you so much that you are ours. We love you. We want nothing more than you. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just, Lord, we are, we don't have the words to say, Lord, that it's only because of you, Lord, that we have a Savior. Only because of you, Lord, we know love. Only because of you, Lord, we know your presence. And it's only because of you, Lord, that we have a relationship with God, our Heavenly Father, and it's only because of you, Lord, we are part of your family. And Lord, we just want to say, Lord, that so many times, Lord, we just ask for things. When you have given us the greatest gift of all, you have given us life everlasting in your presence, Lord. But this time, Lord, we just want to come before you and say, Lord, we are humbled. Lord. And Lord, we pray, Lord, that we will never forget the sacrifice that you made so that we can have a relationship with you, Lord. Lord, that we will always, Lord, come before you trying to live, Lord, our lives as you would have us live righteous lives, Lord that we would honor you and exalt you in every circumstance, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that you will enable us to never let you down. Because, yes, Lord, we have a Savior and we have a Father and we have a Lover and we have, you are everything, Lord, for us, Lord. You are all-encompassing. And we just see, Lord, that we know we can never love you with the love that you have shown us, Lord. 
but we do love you we adore you and we thank you lord for all that you have done for us and all that you continue to do for us lord and thank you jesus that you came down lord on earth so that we could be part of your family in jesus name we pray amen amen let's end with the song with the familiar carol joy to the world let's look a little happy like swati i can see swati smiling just look happy release a blessing to each one of us to our families and in our homes our households for this joy to be released an inexpressible joy incomprehensible joy the joy lord jesus that you promised to make complete now let us flood our homes Let it flood our hearts, not just for this day, Lord, not just for this season, but even through the coming year and years. Uh, let your joy be our portion. Just come, Holy Spirit, and overwhelm us with the joy of Christmas, the joy of the Savior. A joy that has been given, uh, never to be taken back. I want to thank you so much for this morning. Thank you for for what we remember, what we commemorate. We thank you most of all, Lord Jesus, for you, for yourself, for the gift of yourself. And in your name, the matchless, wonderful, precious name, we pray. Amen.